Okay. Yeah. Okay. So welcome everybody. This is um, a very special webinar that we're doing with Melissa Clark from MC Virtual Assistance and Megan Sison. So am I saying <laughs> that right? Has how do you yeah? That's <laughs> It's perfect. Um, studios interior design um, based in California. So um, Melissa, who owns MC Virtual Assistants, obviously does uh, a lot with interior designers, helping them with all kinds of different processes. And Megan has been working with her for quite some time. So what is going to be really interesting is to hear from firsthand experience for everyone too shy to try this. Or possibly, you know, you've 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 dipped your toe in, but maybe you're not utilizing it properly because there's so much to now, you know, delegating and and other things. So um, we will answer your questions, but there is um, a whole series of questions that we have prepared already. So feel free to jump in. I'm going to try and um, help out with the questions as you come up with something. So just uh, pop over into the question and Q&A section at the, either at the bottom of your screen or at the top of your screen to put questions in. And I will do my best to field those. By the way, I'm Heather McManus of the Designers Collaborative. Forgot to say that. So welcome everyone and uh, and we will we'll get started. So thank you guys yeah. for being here. Thank you so much, Heather. Yes, excited to be here today, um, you know, and dive in on all things um, virtual assistant, outsourcing. Mm -hmm. um, I've had the pleasure of working with Megan for several years. Um, and yeah, I thought it would be, really be beneficial to hear firsthand from uh, Megan about her experience, what brought her to needing a VA, what made her reach that decision, how she outsources, what she outsources. The benefits, challenges, and all the things that go with that. Um, so thank you, Megan, for being here today. Really excited yeah, to dive in. <laughs> <laughs> so um, tell me, you know, for the benefit of everybody, a little bit, you know, about, you know, what you do, what your your firm is, and kind of how you um, first started thinking about, you know, getting mm. some support way back when. Sure. So M Studio Interior Design uh, started back in 2015. And I will admit, I knew nothing about business. I think I was kind of just treating my business as a hobby. And it wasn't until maybe 2016 or 17, I started coaching with uh, IDBA, which is actually how I met Heather, how I got introduced to you, Melissa. Um, and through that coaching program, I realized I really needed to uh, outsource a lot of various tasks, tasks that would weigh me down. Um, and by delegating that, I realized I could, you know, free myself and allow myself to kind of hone in on my zone of genius, which I think a majority of us on this Zoom are interior designers. So being able to just say, okay, these are the things that I am not very good at, or I take too much time on, or just really don't want to do them, I could assign to a virtual assistant. And that's kind of where it all began. Um, we were given this exercise through my coaching program called a cake and crud list. Heather, I don't know if you remember that at all. I mean, it's essentially lying out all the things that you love to do and all the things that you really dislike doing um, and going through all of that to see, okay, these are things that I could outsource, whether it's a virtual assistant or an accountant, a drafts person, whatever it might be. So that really helped. Um, another person actually told me, just take a full week and literally write down every single thing that you do that entire week and see where you are like most proficient and what you, what you just absolutely hate. I was actually doing like my own books back at that time. <laughs> and I was like, what am I doing? So... <laughs> I uh, fortunately was able to find a bookkeeper to outsource that to. So little by little, I was able to identify these are the things that I could get rid of from my plate. Yeah. So yeah. that's how it really all began to, to mm -hmm. simply answer mm -hmm. your question. Yeah. So bookkeeping was the first thing, because that seemed to be a place where designers start. Like oh. I would say 90% of designers <laughs> I speak to are like, I have a bookkeeper. That's like the first step. Like that's yeah. the first thing that they do. Get your and books they seem to kind of get stuck. <laughs> At that point, it's like, I know I need to help, but I'm really now not sure like what with. 
Um, so, you know, once you've got the bookkeeper, that was your first kind of experience of outsourcing. What can you remember? What was the next thing that you did after that? Oh, gosh, in order, I can't remember specifically, but I'm, I'm almost certain that bringing on um, a virtual assistant was um, was key. Um, and um, it was kind of a struggle because I really didn't know where to begin. I've never worked with at that time, never worked with a, a virtual assistant before. Um, mm -hmm. I had a design assistant. And I think, you know, at that time, I kept thinking, oh, a design assistant could do X, Y and Z. AKA all the administrative things that a design assistant would not like to do. <laughs> so so um, yes. I, my first experience in, in working with a VA was, okay, you know, looking at my crud list, what exactly could I give them? And I, I struggled a little bit because I'm like, this is all virtual. I, I really was stuck on wanting somebody there in person with me. And so it was a huge transition. Um, and even when I brought a virtual assistant at first on board, I still had a like a, a local design assistant with me. And it just, you know, it was a matter of molding how to delegate what tasks to who. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it took some time. And I don't know if I'm getting ahead of myself here, but it took some time to understand what kind of tasks I could delegate I um, mean, it was also a matter of understanding, you know, who I was delegating to. And so I felt so incredibly blessed when I was introduced to you, Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> Our working relationship, I don't know if you want to share, but yeah. um, so, it started yeah. off differently. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's interesting what you said about the in-person help, because again, that seems to be a bit of a stumbling block sometimes. And, you know, and there's definitely still a place for that boots on the ground, as I call it, you know, um, totally. there is, you know, the photo shoot help you know running accessories returning things that you've brought that you're not using um picking up sample you know and that's something obviously virtually you know as much as I'd love to be on your doorstep um you know we can't do so there is still an element of that and that's some I think you're right that's sometimes something that designers struggle with because they're like I don't need somebody full-time doing the boots on the ground but you know that boots on the ground person necessarily isn't the right fit to be doing that piece for me right um you know and you've experienced that you've kind of had all pieces of the puzzle you know you've done the bookkeeping you outsource your drafting uh, <laughs> you know you have your admin and your ops help uh through me you have um you know you outsource your dubsado setup separately oh, as well. yeah. you outsource your uh website and your branding I well. love to outsource <laughs> yeah so you know it, it, it's it's you know sometimes I think everybody can look at it as a whole and be like I know I need help but I don't know what with you know, and, and there's that saying, you know, jack of all trades, master of none. And it's kind of like really pigeonholing and saying, okay, I know I need this. Who is the best person to, you know, do that? Right, for me? right. And, you know, I'll speak to designers and I'll openly say, look, you know what? I don't think you need a VA right now. I think what you need is, you know, a bookkeeper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, you need, you know, um, or you need, you know, a, a, a draft person or whatever that might be. You know, you're talking about the Psalo and CRM and stuff. And while some of the operational side is some support we do offer, again, there's so many sort of niche people out there that offer that as a service. So right. yeah, that's um that's interesting. Okay. So um what should we sort of touch on, you know, what we currently sort of work together on and what you know what you currently outsource to a VA like how sure. for yeah. you yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, you, you take off anywhere from 30 to 50 hours a month would you say mm -hmm. like throughout mm -hmm. the year mm -hmm. 30 to 50 yeah. hours and I'm just you know a single interior designer I don't have a team of other designers so for for me to offload that amount of work just gives me so much freedom to um focus on design but to also do a little bit of travel here and there Melissa you and I have had our weekly calls in different cities and different countries and that's always a lot of fun um so being able to have you AVA on my side allows me that flexibility to both design and um get some travel in at the same time Mm -hmm. Um, so the, the tasks, I mean, they'll, oh gosh, where do I even begin? Um, okay. So a lot of us, I think on this call are a part of TDC, the design collaborative. And what's great about our group is that we have access to all sorts of wonderful things when it comes to, to purchasing, procuring products for our clients. So now one of the things that I am just so not good at is creating purchase orders and taking care of, I, I come from a kitchen and bath background. <laughs> and so I still feel like I'm learning a lot when it comes time for the purchasing procurement of 
wow. furniture, a decor. And Melissa, you have been a godsend for me and just trying to figure out the, <laughs> the, the pricing, the ordering, the yada, da, 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 all of that fun stuff, the, the tracking, yeah. the correspondence, that in itself is like a, a whole separate job. And I'm so incredibly thankful that, um, you were by my side to mm-hmm. tackle that entire piece. Cause really all of that on my end for M studio, that is Melissa. <laughs> yeah. So the procurement MCDA, element. So, I should say. Yeah. <laughs> so exactly. So that whole kind of procurement mm-hmm. element, um, you know, is definitely something that is something that, you know, as you say, oh. I, I, I take on, um, you know, and it's that client relationship management as well. You know, it, oh, it's kind sure. of I'm, um, you know, I have a, an email address through through Megan's, um, you know, business. So for all intents and purposes, you know, Megan, the clients and vendors think I'm sitting in the office in California with her. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not. Unless I'm, I say so. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm sitting here in New Jersey. Um, but yeah, so it's, um, you know, but it, it's wonderful that they, I, I'm still considered part of the team. Oh you know, my goodness, one hundred percent. It's it's lovely, you know, like there'll be an award entry or something, you know, it's oh oh you know, is Melissa gonna come? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh that's, that's so that. funny. Yeah, oh. all the all the trades will typically so Melissa's taking care of email correspondence back and forth with the, with the trades, ordering samples or checking on status of things beyond just product procurement. Um but uh, even clients, we we send out weekly project updates to our clients, so they'll get those emails. And every now and then, there's events, there's parties, or there's client appreciation things. And oh, is Melissa going to be there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's lovely, <laughs> but, you know. And that we're it's on so opposite great. ends of you know we're the biggest time difference really that there would be the three yeah. hours of the east to the west coast. But you know, it doesn't cause an issue. Um, no. If anything, sometimes it's a benefit. For Megan, um, because I can jump on something earlier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, we'll see sometimes. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, and exactly, you know, the the time differences really don't don't cause too much of a of a problem for us. Um, right, and in age two with technology, I mean, it's insane. Like this, we're we're having a Zoom call. Yeah. Heather, you're you're in Jersey? No, you New York, Jersey. Oh, well, you both are in the East Coast. Yeah. Yeah, Jersey, Jersey, California girl over here. So <laughs> having having the ability to have these kinds of calls, um, send out emails, schedule emails, whatever it might be, it's yeah, it's uh-huh. a big bonus. Uh-huh. So alongside me, Megan also worked with another VA, um, MMT VA, and she supports Megan with uh, marketing. So you know that's um, social media tasks, uh, newsletters, newsletters, uh, postable. Um, sending out client client gifts birthday cards, uh, birthday cards instagram um, all that fun stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a lot <laughs> so you know that's a, again, a separate kind of we'll have there through another va so again it's kind of pinpointing those needs and 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 delegating those as as needed um in terms of what we sort of use and you know our our best sort of practices I guess for our communication and tools that you know project management tools are, are are key you know right um that was something Megan I know what made you did you have we use Basecamp did you have Basecamp right, right. before you were working with um a VA and outsourcing did you have that for yourself I did I did actually yeah. so back in gosh it was it was really early on when I started but I I hired a um, website developer to just take a glance at my website and see what could work and what didn't work and, you know, what I could personally do to update it, just given the uh, dollar investment that I had at that time. And she was using Basecamp. I was like, well, this is really cool. You could assign me tasks. I could see what's due. I was like, I really enjoy this. And and my realtor uh, buddy at the time was using, um, I believe it was Asana. Other people were using other programs and they're all really similar. But for me, Basecamp was just so intuitive. I really liked the format, the layout, the visuals of being able to see individual tiles to represent individual client projects. And then having the ability to invite clients, but them not see internal tasks. And also invite my team so that I could delegate and give them due dates. Um, there was just so many different features in Basecamp that I really enjoyed. And every now and then, I mean, it's been, gosh, it's been so many years. I keep thinking, oh, should I switch to this or this or this? I'm like, no, keep it simple. <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of platforms out there like, you know, Sana, Click, you know, they, they, they all do the same thing. And it's right, exactly right. like you said, Megan, I think it's what kind of appeals to you and you seem <laughs> yeah. to jive with. 
Um, you know, it's interesting you were kind of getting that up and running before working um, virtually. But, you know, that that's, I would say, our main kind of method of, of communication. And we use that to delegate oh, tasks, assign tasks, move deadlines, mm -hmm. um, you know, and enables Megan to see what she delegated to me if she needs to move things, push things back. Um, so, I wanna, yeah. Mm, yeah. Sorry, did not mean to, mean to interrupt. Um, one of the beautiful things about Basecamp is that you could create a template for a project ahead of time. So let's say you're getting ready to onboard a new project. You click on that template and boom, all of your tasks are already populated. And then I could just start delegating. And mm -hmm. what's wonderful, Melissa, you actually just started, um, we were getting ready to onboard a new client and Melissa had created a new Basecamp project for this client. So she's able to see like, oh, I already know what our process is. We got to start X, Y, and Z. Uh, I'll assign that to Megan, assign that to myself. Let's get this ordered, blah, 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 <laughs> Yeah, It's yeah. all in there. So we're, we're kind of in a sense on autopilot and we don't take on too many projects at one time. So it's just, it's beautiful to have that already set because sometimes when you know, you don't start a new project for several months. It's like, well, how, what was our process again? It's already dialed in. <laughs> yeah. And that's exactly that. And sometimes, you know, I speak to designers and they have, don't have those set up. They don't have those templates in place. They don't have those SOPs. And, you know, they, they have SOPs without realizing it. They're just in their head. They've just not yes. put it down on paper and made it happen. <laughs> like, you know, used to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. And it just needs, you know, documenting and taking that that kind of first project, that time to say, okay, you know, this is this is my process. This is generally what my flow is from right. you know A to Z. Let's get right. that down on paper, and then, as you say, what elements of that can be delegated? You know, mailing the oh, client yeah. thank you gift for signing on. You know, that's not something yeah. that oh, you super need to easy. Do as oh, part of that. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, filing the signed design agreement away in the Google Drive folder. Yeah. Right. Right. That one. Um, you know, there's a lot of steps that, that go on and that helps to kind of really break it down and narrow it down and see, you know, what 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 those are. So yeah, we we use Basecamp, Google, you know, Google Drive, filing system, shared filing system, you know, Dropbox is another popular one, but you know, the, the right. G Suite is is a good one. It's a good uh, you know, typical we have our Zoom meetings, absolutely. You know, where would we be without Zoom? Um, you know, I mean, yeah. we were working together, I think, pre-COVID. Um, you know, and, and even before so then, now. we were on our phones, weren't we? We were yeah. doing calls. Yeah. You know, now it makes you realize, actually, how far we have come. The, the virtual concept of, of virtual work now is, right. is much more accepted and, I think, you know, um, common than Absolutely. it was four years ago. Yeah. Right, right. Um, yeah. So to all you designers, I mean, you know, having Zoom or, or what's that other one? Skype. I don't know if anybody uses that, but uh, yeah, these, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> these are <laughs> incredible for having client meetings when um, your clients might be out of town or if you yourself are out of town. I have had um, Zoom meetings in, again, different cities and different countries with clients to keep things moving forward. So it's it's beautiful. Yeah. It's awesome. I yeah. love it. Yeah. <laughs> we have used uh, Google Voice. We have Google Voice as our sort of phone system. So, you know, that means that if there's an extension on it, if somebody's calling specifically to get a hold of me, then it will ping my cell phone um, or it will go to to, to Megan. So, yeah. you know, that that, that, that works as well. Um, for the what's virtual. beautiful about that is, uh, you know, if clients are texting me on the Google Voice number, sometimes what I'll do is I'll include Melissa but on the other numbers. So you'll be able to see what is happening. Or if a client leaves a voice message, um, it actually goes directly into our emails, right? With a transcript. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah. Which is, yeah. I, yeah. I think that's a wonderful feature because sometimes, I don't know if my plane's on or my plane, my phone's on airplane mode or whatever it might be. I'm in a client meeting and I'm just checking emails. Oh, hey, I missed that call. Here's the voicemail. Blah, blah, blah. So mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, all yeah. those tools are are incredible, mm -hmm. and I don't know if we want to touch on Dubsado, but that has been like one of my like most recent favorite tools yeah. to incorporate. Heather, you've heard of Dubsado, right? I have, I have not used it. It's it's an automation software, right? Yeah, yeah, well, CRM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Automation CRM. It's I don't know. How, yeah, I guess it is a CRM. It does a lot of other really cool things, but. Um, my favorite part is that when a new client makes an inquiry on my website, 
they are taken care of. Um, so as soon as they fill out the form, they automatically get an acknowledgement email with some information about here are my services and here's what we can offer you and, and all these other fun things. And it prompts them to fill out a questionnaire. And then from that point, then they can automatically book a uh, complimentary discovery call. And it it's all, it's all automated. It's so beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, that's definitely been a good uh, upgrade, definitely, this year, I think. And, you know, the, the, that front end of the process can definitely be automated to agree. And it, to a degree, as you say, when then the calls coming in and things then need to start being that kind of personal touch and, you know, the touch points of, okay, yeah, well, you know, right. now we'll take it from there. Right. Um, but, yeah, that's definitely saved, I think, that, yeah, oh, automated. Sure. Because yeah. in the past, it was either, uh, you know, people were automatically – calling my, my private personal phone if they were friends or friends of friends or friends of family. Um, mm -hmm. Or Melissa was the one kind of screening everything. Um, but, you know, as a human being, it's like we have sleeping hours. So if people are awake at odd <laughs> hours and filling in inquiries, then they won't, you know, they won't get a response until like business hours. But at least with this, you know, if they're in a different time zone or whatever the case might be, it's like they get that acknowledgement. Um, I think I have it set to like 13 minutes, 13 minutes after they make that inquiry, boom. <laughs> Hey, yeah. thanks for emailing us. <laughs> it makes Love such it. a difference. Love yeah. it. Yeah. So those are all. I have, I have yes, yeah, go for it. That. So who set that up for you and was it hard? Uh, I delegated that. I outsourced that one for sure. It was a Debs Auto specialist who, you know, I think we spent maybe two hours just talking about here's how I want it to flow. This is our process in our business. And it was the best two hours of time that I've ever invested and money well spent. She mapped it all out, branded it the way that we wanted uh, based on whatever I had provided her. And um, she she took it, ran with it and created everything for us. And I actually have a, a couple of gal pals who tried to take Dubsado and do the workflows on their own. Um, you know, it, it, there, there's a big time investment in that. I don't know how that's working for them. I'll have to check back in and see. But I'm just so happy that I delegated that because, boy, it is it is working just fantastically for me. Yeah. <laughs> it has yeah. its quirks like anything else. Um, but yeah. that portion, yeah. the bringing in the leads, being able to see, you know, who called when or who inquired and what their background is, how they heard about us. Was it a referral? Was it social media? Was it Google? Was it internet search? Um, and just being able to track it that way versus some other CRMs. I think I tried like HubSpot and I just did not know what to do with that. I didn't outsource anything for that, but, um, yeah. having Dubsado just made the world of difference and Melissa will go in there and actually, because it keeps track of all of our emails. She'll go in there and, and be able to take care of business, see what kind of information we need. If there's like a mailing address separate from the project site address, um, if there's alternate contacts, um, it's 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 a really cool tool. We could have a yeah. webinar just on Dubsado, but we're not here for yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, in turn, you know, we're talking about tools and software. We'll kind of carry on this 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 vibe. Uh, Loom, I think. Oh my gosh, what, love it. <laughs> we've been using yes. Uh, um, you know, I do recommend a lot. So Loom is a screen sharing video recording of your screen tool, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, Megan will delegate a task and, you know, she'll she'll record a screen and talk to me as she's doing it. So it's, you know, here we go. Yeah. Here's where you're going to find the file. Um, you know, it needs to look like this. Uh, let me go into Dubsado. Here's the client information, whatever it right. is. You know, she'll talk me through it on the screen. Boom. It creates a link. You know, the link then becomes the brief. You know, that's not then something in an email that Megan's had to type an email out or, you know, bring right. the task. It's all there. I can visually see it. I know exactly what I'm doing. Um, you know, it does then ping Megan when I viewed the video. So then Megan knows, you know, <laughs> that I've seen it, I've viewed it. Um, uh, yeah, I, I love Loom. I think it's a great tool for delegation. Oh my God. Um, you know, it, it saves time and it definitely makes things a lot clearer than what you might be trying to put in an email. You know, it's saving you having to jump on a Zoom call. Right. do a screen share you know right. it, it's kind of there and that's um, its intention is to replace minimize um actual yes. meetings yeah yes yes to kind of go through on the screen so you know i think there's a five minute limit on the free version 
um after that i think it's paid but i don't think it's crazy i think it's like ten dollars a month or something but it's yeah. um it's, it's definitely... worth its money <laughs> yeah that's a good that's tool for sure. as well but i would say from using zoom for just explaining things to to you and delegating tasks i mean I'll, I'll use Zoom. I actually use it religiously when I'm communicating with my drafts person because I outsource my drafting. So mm -hmm. being able to see, so the way that I design, I create a model in SketchUp and then I'll send that off to my drafts person to create the drawings from layout. And so I'm able to share with her, this is what we need. Or if I need her to update something in the SketchUp model, I can say, can you do X, Y, and Z? And then I'm pointing in different locations on the model. Um, and then also when it comes time for client presentations, if for whatever reason, there's just not enough time and, you know, a portion of their presentation is to be continued, I can just go through that presentation on Loom, record it and send it off to them. Uh, Judy Lou, one of our clients, just this amazing woman, but incredibly busy. And it, it seems that her free time tends to be during hours, sleeping hours, even though she's in the same time zone. <laughs> as me. So she, she's been loving those Loom videos because I can actually share with her, walk her through the process of her design concept presentation. And then she could just watch it whenever she has that free moment, say three o'clock in the morning, yeah. <laughs> whenever it might be. But um, there are times where Loom is just incredibly useful in those situations too. Mm. Yeah. You keep that client personal touch as well because she's hearing your voice. You yes. know, you can, have your, you can have in the bottom, you can choose to either like show your video yeah, or not. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's pretty obviously cool. she's hearing your voice. So it, it's key from a client perspective, as you say, like you sending that off to her. Mm -hmm. It's much mm -hmm. more personal than just an email, you know, and saying right. here's the thing is. She's feeling like she's, yeah, got that touch point. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And super mm -hmm. awesome when it comes time to, to um, delegating tasks, because I will say before, before I found out about Loom, um, for me to delegate a task to, to you or Amanda, let's say, uh, I would have to describe like, okay, you're going to go in this file and then you're going to do this and you're going to click on this. It's like creating a procedures manual that's so unnecessary. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it would take me longer to write up that task. And I'm thinking to myself, should I just do this myself? <laughs> yeah, well, this, yeah, exactly. So then it's like, how do I do it that it's effective that I'm not ending up doing it myself? You know, and right. but once you've done it once, you know, then you've got a process for that. So another tool, right. we've not had to use this one, Megan, but another one that I'm using more and more is called Scribe. Ooh. And that is a, uh, it automates um, SOPs. So what it oh. does is it records the screen. So like this. So let's say we're saying how to save a document in the Google Drive, you know. Yeah. So it's like, okay, so you go to this client folder, you know, you you open it, you find your PDF, you upload it. And what it does is that takes the screenshot and writes what you're kind of saying and creates PDF for you. It like oh my creates goodness. that SOP workflow. Nice. So yeah, you know, automation, it's the way the world is going, AI, oh, all of crazy. this. So um, you know, that's that's a good one that if you're somebody, again, coming back to the FOP saying, I don't have any procedures, I don't have any workflows, you know, next time you're doing something, <laughs> you know, maybe just spend, you know, a couple of months like doing something, getting a scribe and just documenting those processes. The ones that you know yeah. you do every day. Yeah. Um, and before you know it, that you know, you've got your workflows in place. Right. And um, have the VA do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. and, then, and then once you've done it once, you know, again, it's like if I keep telling, you know, if I have to tell them what to do, and I might as well do it myself. But, you know, again, it's like you get out what you put in. Kind of have to right, put right. that investment in at the front end yeah. to then, you know, have then clear and precise and somebody be able to, to, to kind of roll with it. So, you know, that kind of brings me to my next sort of question of, of uh, what's the challenges have you, have you found? Like, um, how have mm. you had to adapt your working style, Megan? To like what you know outsourcing yes of course it absolutely had its benefits but you know have you had any challenges you've kind of had to overcome personally too yeah I'm sure there are a ton that I encountered I'm trying to look back in my my files in my brain uh <laughs> drafting in particular I'll say that because I have outsourced drafting so I I actually was working with a drafts person locally and um you know after COVID I kind of decided to go in a different direction and um I, I actually tried out three different drafts people that I found on Upwork. And the challenge was finding somebody who would align with how I perceive my, my drawings to be. And they would have to follow NKBA standards. They had to look a certain way. Um, 
you know, the drafts person would have to turn them around within a certain amount of time. So that I felt that that was a challenge. And I, I say it like it was just it was so easy because I found one of the three to be perfect. And she still does our drafting for us. But at that time, I'm just like, I'm never going to find this person. <laughs> They're not going to be this good. And da, 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 da. I just had all of this. Um, I don't know roadblocks that I kept running into. How do I find that right person? When it came time, eventually I found the right person and I was like, okay, this is a breeze. It was just a matter of trial and error. Let's try this, figure it out. Okay, this is what we need to work on and bringing in Loom as well as um, Basecamp into the mix. I was able to find a really good flow and that was pretty much the same with my my VA, um, mm. you. <laughs> uh, you know, what's going to work? What doesn't work? What can I delegate? At the very beginning, I, I just didn't even have a clue. And I think I was taking a lot of um, feedback from my coaching group, like, this is what I could delegate. Oh, we're going to create those SOPs. But at the time, you know, before we knew about Scribe, we actually haven't used Scribe, Melissa, but I think I just had you like type in Word uh -huh. doc procedures which did yep. actually come in handy when you went on maternity leave. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember that. So that was, yeah. that was kind of a fun thing, but um, just understanding how can I use my VA? Because I think a lot of people in that transition, you know, who never worked with a VA before mm -hmm. and then decide to work with one, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm investing in, I don't know, 30 or 40 or 50 hours a month. How do I fill that time? You could fill it really quickly, I promise you, but it's just a matter of understanding what you can delegate. And people in other professions, for example, um, my realtor friend who was asking me how I leverage my VA, and we had this whole conversation. I was like, you could do X, Y, and Z. I mean, there's all these different components from, from marketing to emails to just reaching out to clients to, I mean, the marketing is a big chunk right there. Um, mm. for a realtor. So it was just a yeah. matter of honing in on what could I delegate, but also what, what are the things that are, are going to work? Like, is it going to take me forever and a day to write a task to delegate that I probably could have just tackled that on my own? Yeah. Like where, you know, you have to see that ROI. So um, I think that was the biggest challenge, just understanding what to delegate and how to do it effectively. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, delegating is, is, is a skill. You know, it is. It is something that kind of not everybody's comfortable with, not used to. You know, they're probably working on their own for years, but getting yeah. busier and, you know, being able to take that next step. You know, I feel I've right. talked to a lot of people. It's it's interesting. I've I've had quite a few sort of people come back to me this year that I spoke to nine months ago. And it's like, no, now I really do need help, you know. <laughs> no, yeah. that's enough. You know, I gotta feel you have to get to that point. Everybody has a different threshold of what that point might look like. Right. Um, you know, sometimes it's like, let's not get it to that point. Let's, you know, implement yeah. the support yeah. before you get to that point because <laughs> you're only kind of heading one way. Um, <laughs> and but, well, uh, over time, it's like, I feel like you and I, we've been together for so many years, but I feel like we're, I'm still discovering things I could delegate. So, for example, testimonials, that's a new thing that we kind of yeah. added in. And I actually outsource the testimonials. I work with a gal, Trisha Malloy, who she'll interview my clients for, you know, 15, 20 minutes max, and then compose a, um, like a testimonial for the clients to approve and then post on either Google or House. And there's some smaller consultation pieces that um, I perform. And I figured, well, Melissa could do something similar for those people that, you know, we, we work together like a one-off <laughs> and it will increase, you know, our, our marketing, having that testimonial there just kind of instills that, that credibility. So I'm like, that's one thing that we could totally delegate. So uh -huh. Melissa put together a whole form or I'll let you share. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, so we just did a Google form and put that together. And so now I'm kind of sending that out and following up and, and yeah, you know, we, it, it's those sort of things that get, <laughs> Get left behind that now we're going to have lots of videos that yeah. go on Google on, the, on house and get the house badge once a year and <laughs> absolutely, um, absolutely you know for that yeah yeah it's, it's, yeah. there's so many little pieces that as things pop up um oh, gosh, you know so I last, yeah I was on FedEx I think last last week getting you know uploading documents to have the spec binders printed out and yes you know yep. getting all of that sort of compiled yep. and downloaded and together and in and off and yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. or for for uh us designers that are asid or nkba or you have your ncidq and you need to update your um ceus i send all of that to melissa i'm like hey can you just 
update all of this? Can you upload it to whatever file I need? Yes, whatever website. Stay ahead of my certification. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, award entries are another good one. Award that we do. entries for sure. Yeah. yeah. So okay. I'll send Melissa whatever whatever is needed, and she just uploads everything and verifies everything, making sure that it it's um, uh, hitting all the right and proper requirements. Uh -huh, Big uh -huh. deal. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> There's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot. Um, okay, so how would you, you know, you're talking about ROI there, what, you know, how do you feel from your perspective, you know, outsourcing in general and using a VA has helped you to grow your business from where you were five years ago to where you are today? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I mean, overall revenue has, has absolutely increased, especially when it, when it came time to selling furniture, um, Gosh, Melissa, you just you take all of that off my plate, which is incredible. Um, and I will share that in the last, let's see, after COVID, I feel like every year, maybe every other month, I'm in a new spot, <laughs> meaning that I'm I'm traveling about and I'm doing my business. Um, and it's probably like 80% vacation, 20% work. I'll be working remotely while I'm in. I don't know, Vietnam or Thailand or Costa Rica or Japan or whatever it might be. And um, I can rest and feel at ease knowing that the task that I've delegated to Melissa keeps things moving forward. I can still get on my laptop while I'm out of the country or out of the state, but uh, Melissa kind of helps to ensure and, and pick things up and keep things moving so that clients never have to worry like, oh, well, she's out of town. So is everything closed or what's going on? It's like, no not the case at all because uh, clients are getting their weekly updates. Um, samples are still being ordered. Correspondence is still happening. And whether it's me or Melissa, it's like, I feel, I just, oh, I feel so good. I was never able to do that before. And I thought it was kind of impossible, but I, I actually had that goal of, you know, being able to travel the world with my teacher boyfriend who has the entire summer off um so being able to work you know balance out work and then balance out the the life and uh the relationship <laughs> I think I think that is what having a VA has allowed me to do not yeah. just a VA but being able to outsource yeah right. yeah the work-life balance definitely yeah, yeah. I think mean, that, that comes up a lot you know designing the wearing all the hats doing it all themselves you know, can't keep working 12 hour days, you know, seven days. No, a week. I don't think I do that anymore. <laughs> it's too much. And, um, you know, but they don't need part time help. They don't need full time help. They don't necessarily need part time help. Um, but, you know, they need somebody. Equally, it goes the other way as well, because, you know, I've had a client recently who we, who we were supporting with the VA. Um, but now they've grown to the point where they need a full time employee. You know, mm. so that VA, he was he was doing all of those hours. You know, they're like, no, we we, we need somebody in house. So you know, yeah. it's helped to kind of bridge that gap for growth. Um, you know, on on the other Ooh. side Ooh. as well. Um, <laughs> you know, being able to outsource certain different areas, as you say, as a whole. Yeah, you got a question for us, Heather? I do. It's your website, so I'm putting it into the okay, chat. Box. Put that in there. Yeah. Everyone. So in the chat box, I have Melissa's um, website there so you can contact her. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've spoken about software, we've spoken about sort of um, the, the delegation tools, and, you know, communication, you know, is is is, is the software, the, the project management software, Zoom. Uh, we very rarely tech, actually, Megan, don't we? Yeah, unless it's a, yeah. you know, insensitive item, I'll get a text message um hey Sharon <laughs> good to see you <laughs> but yeah, but rarely will we will we have text communication uh yeah unless it's super urgent then you know yeah. we text each other. but for the most part it's it's email it's base camp um you know we're talking about tasks so in base camp if there's a question about a task that's not time sensitive or an update we just we throw it in base camp and mm -hmm. we know exactly where the correspondence is so Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you know, the time difference doesn't doesn't matter. Okay. Um, what would be your advice for somebody considering working with a VA? Well, one, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> do it. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> and um two, 
uh, taking this from, from IDBA, but really take a look at your cake and crud list if you haven't done anything similar. And it doesn't have to be called cake and crud. That's just what they called it. It was kind of fun because cake, mm, something you love. And then the crud, it's like, oh, the crap that you hate. Mm. Uh, so taking a look at that. And I will share with you when I did that list, it was like my cake list was like this big compared to my crud list, which was two pages long. <laughs> <laughs> and literally oh, what I did was I, I went through my crud list and I highlighted all the things that I could delegate. So, you know, there's the, the simple things you could identify, like taking care of QuickBooks, boom, account, bookkeeper, uh, drafting, send that to a drafts person. And then all the other stuff, it's like following up with the trades or requesting samples or getting pricing, getting estimates, all that crap. It's like, oh, I could, not that it's crap, it's very valuable work. <laughs> <laughs> I could delegate that to my VA because that's that's where you shine is like all the administrative things that a designer <laughs> can't really keep up with. It would take me twice as long to do something, whereas someone like Melissa, as talented as you or your team, um, could could handle all of those tasks so quickly, efficiently, and with ease. Yes, yeah, doing things more efficiently, and and you know, like you said, and and the other thing is, you know, depending on number of hours and what it is that we're doing, right. what I do for you, you know, a lot of that time is 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 billable and passable on, you know, to yeah. the project management fees, you know, client fees. Like I track my time hourly for Megan, so you know, depending on what it is that I'm doing, you know, some of our VAs on the team they'll do mood board sourcing, whatever, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes that can be a, that can be a a packed on cost to your clients oh it should be actually <laughs> um because you know instead of you spending you know your hourly rate doing right you know <laughs> procurement right. Right. um and if that's part of your fee structure and however you know flat fees hourly whatever that fee structure looks like you know instead of you spending that time you can be delegating that Mm -hmm. you know, at a, at a lower rate and still passing that on, but also freeing up then an extra hour of your time <laughs> to be absolutely doing 100%. So I do flat fees when I charge. And so, you know, since we've worked together for so long, I've, I've kind of calculated how to build you in. But on rare occasions, when it comes time for a billing hourly, we actually specify uh, those hours. And it's very rare. I think we've only had, what, two projects on that. So, you know, there's a designer rate and then a drafting rate and then an a administrative rate. Um, so, yeah, you should always make sure that that's covered for because if it's not your, I mean, somebody's spending time on it. So whether the designer <laughs> is spending time on it or mm -hmm. the VA mm -hmm. is spending time on it or an assistant yeah. spending time on it, you want to make sure that it's it's billable time yeah. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, and if it's business in, internal, as you say, marketing or whatever it is, then that yeah. might be more business internal setting up. SOPs, right. marketing right, support, right. you know, that's a business cost. Right. Um, you know, it, it might be then that the, the the other half of the work is being covered and, you know, it, it, it's to help take that next step because ultimately there's only so many hours in the day, there's only so many things you can be doing. So yeah. it, it's at yeah. some point taking that kind of next step to, um, you know, assuming you want to grow the business and just have a, some sort of work-life balance. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, that's what we aim for balance in life. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. Okay, okay. About uh, time tracking software, which one do you use? What tool do you use? I actually, oh, sorry, did you want to go, Melissa? No, no, you, no, you go, Megan. Yeah. So I, I use this app. I've been using this app for a long time. It's called uh, Hours Tracker. It's an app on my phone. Um, it's got a white background. I don't know if I can share it. No, eh. it's got a white background. It looks like a little blue pig with a with a clock in the middle. I think I paid at one time, I don't know, maybe less than $20. That was years ago. And I've had this before even working with a VA. Um, and even though I, I um, charge a flat fee, I still track my time to gauge, you know, what I'm what I'm spending on each project. So that's been incredibly helpful. And then, um, Obviously, Melissa, you use something different when you when you bill your clients. So, yeah. so I have, you know, we have an internal system for, for time tracking, but, you know, popular ones is Harvest uh, is one. Toggle is another one. Uh, T-O-G-G-L. I don't got any on the end. Uh, there are a couple of, you know, popular ones to look into. Yeah. You know, designers, apps on your phones, I think, if you're out and about, is going to be easier. Oh. 
so um, handy. Well, you, <laughs> like, you know, you start the clock before something. you start a meeting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, even the notes on your iPhone. You know, I have one designer who she literally just has like, you know, post-it notes or like pads, and then at the end of the month, she'll just take a photo of that particular post-it <laughs> and that's the answer <laughs> for that client to put into the system to to bill. Yeah, um, let it work. You know, <laughs> again, it's kind of whatever works for you because it can be counterintuitive to sometimes to say do something else if it's not right, right. going to work for you. Um, but yeah, there's a, a, a couple there. Yeah, I do like the apps and the electronic, the digital versions because usually there's a way that you could look at an entire project yeah. like the hours instead of you know looking back at notes and trying to add it up exactly yeah um, download download reports yeah. and stuff from it yeah. as well yeah yeah it just minimizes that time because you're automatically entering it in mm -hmm. you know i mean it's always a, a goal to try and you know get stuff into a uh, studio designer or <laughs> house pro or whatever you know all of these platforms enable time tracking but you know that means going into the system physically and typing it in and, and doing it so you know, that's something if you're billing hourly against the retainer at the end of the month to do, but I would right. suggest throughout the month to keep it easier to, you know, put it in a time tracker app like that would be, would yeah. be easy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Any other questions? Uh, let's see. Does anyone have any more questions? We have um, someone who says in the chat that they would love to speak further with Melissa and the uh, her email is there, that's great. So just so you guys know, uh, this is being recorded. So I will share it via email after, once I have it all put together and I will make sure that you get all of Melissa's information, website, email, um, so you can contact her directly and set up disco discovery calls. So you can find out you know, how she works, how many hours, you know, can you do that kind of thing. Uh, okay, so here's one. Can you give a brief view of how you use Melissa's skills to order furniture through TDC? Oh, um, sure. You want to yeah. answer? Oh, you want me to go? Or <laughs> <you>? <laughs> <laughs> so obviously TDC, we have the shared drive. So, you know, as I mentioned, there's a kind of hello at email that, you know, working with Megan. And that's what we recommend for all of our VAs if they're working with a TDC member, that we have an email set up linked to their business. So, you know, it would be an admin at hello at info at, you know, melissasinteriors.com. Um, so then TDC, you know, there's an L the LOA that we have to sign. Uh, the TDC will share then the TDC drive with that email. So then the VA will have access to the TDC share drive. So obviously in there, we have access to all of the, um, you know, the logins, all the vendor information, all the sheets and things like that. So, you know, Megan will be saying, okay, these are the items, this is the proposal. So I'm able then to go in, find the pricing, you know, add the TDC fees, um, create the proposals, um, you know, inquire about stock level or things like that if necessary. Um, proposal gets paid, yep, send the PO. You know, we use um, Ivy, we're still on the old Ivy, we're hanging on. <laughs> Someone convinced me to switch. <laughs> Hang on till we kicked off. Um, I keep hearing horror stories at the minute, but anyway, that's another that's another conversation for another day about house pro. Um, so yeah, so we uh, you know send the POs through, um, and then yeah, deal with you know the TDC account holder on on Megan's behalf. Uh, you know the only thing you know Ben Moselle, I don't have necessarily Megan Venmo as well. So, you know, I'll be saying to Megan, right, here's the invoice, here's yeah. the amount. Pay these people. Send it to <laughs> pay, me, pay now, pay now. Thank you. Uh, I'm very good about paying on time if, well, I, if I get yes. the memo. <laughs> when I ping you. Um, and then, you know, Megan then lets me know that, yes, she's, you know, she paid and, and then I kind of mark it on the back end and, you know, follow up with the tracking and things. So, yeah. Yeah. And what that looks like is really me just taking my presentation, everything that's approved and sending that over to Melissa. Sometimes there's a loom attached with it or I just say, hey, yeah, there's clickable links on these pieces. <laughs> these so are the really kind of yeah. COM that's or whatever it might be. How you, how you do it. So, yeah, you know, that's a Canva presentation or a PowerPoint, you know, that Megan does it yeah. as a PDF with clickable links to everything in there. So, you know, whether it be the the lighting, you know, obviously things like the paint and, and stuff I'm I'm not worrying about, but, you know, the furniture, um, the lighting, things like that. So I can just go straight in and click and find the products. You know, Megan's not having to do any more work 
because right. she's already done that anyway. So, right. so instead of me like outlining, can you add yeah. these things? Let me click and paste and click and paste. Like, no, no, no. Yeah. I'll, just give you. <laughs> I'll walk yeah. you through a bloom or something or whatever yeah. it might be. Yeah, to walk me through and say, don't worry about that. Just, you know, we're not, we're not doing you know, that furniture right now, but I need you to spec the, the lighting and yeah, you know, so yeah. that falls. Put it in a proposal and we'll send it yeah. off to the client for further yeah. approval. Yeah, yeah, you know, so making sure, looks like. <laughs> make sure that it's all good and that, you know, the freight's happy and, you know, everything looks good and yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay, okay so we have one more question. Um, so Megan, Check how- it on. How did this process of hiring a VA impact your interior design game? Meaning once outsourcing tasks that crud (laughs) (laughs) team. So what was the impression effect uh, on the type of clients or projects you contact with? So maybe for a second, I'll go. Mm -hmm. I think she's trying to say, um, what does the client think of you having a team? Oh, yeah. I think it um, certainly adds value to our overall services and what we have to contribute to the clients that we serve. Um, I think having the team also then allows me to identify, you know, who is my ideal client and uh, being able to qualify them ahead of time. You know, now that we have Dubsado to kind of mm, gauge what kind of clients are coming through, it's really easy to say, you know, this is going to be a fit or it's not going to be a fit. Um, and when they are a fit and we meet, we have our discovery call, we go through the proposal process, they get acquainted, not in person like that or via Zoom, not in person, <laughs> but they get acquainted with my team. They know that there are people supporting me. It's not just me. I'm not truly a one man show. I'm a one lady designer, but I've got people supporting me so that I could then focus on design. And yeah. I very much share that when it comes time to reviewing my proposals with my clients, uh, just like this on Zoom. I actually share my screen. We walk through our proposals uh, and, and, and show them everything that they're investing in. It's not just the design, not just me, but the people that are you know, contributing to their overall process, which includes Melissa, my VA and my drafts person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah. I hope that kind of yeah. answers the question. I don't yeah, know. it gives that perception of a team. It's not just you, you know. Right, like, right. You know, we could be full time, or we could be twenty hours a month. But you know, we're we're a team member. We're there. Yep. Not just you. You have yep. a marketing manager. Yeah. Or you have an operations manager, or you have a procurement <laughs> manager, or you have a draft person, or whatever they might be. Um, you know, and sometimes it helps to have that other person. You know, I'm 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 the bad guy emailing following up on money. You know, <laughs> you know, it's Invite, not please. it's not that good. You know, there's somebody else that can be kind of. Oh, I love you for that. You know, <laughs> <laughs> following up and oh, yeah, and, that invoice they haven't paid yet. <laughs> yeah, you know, sometimes sending those emails that we don't necessarily want to send. Um, but you know, sometimes having that. And, you know, the client inquiries as well, you know, before Dubsago, I was kind of scoping out and being that first point of contact. You know, it wasn't just Megan. It wasn't like they get the straight through to Megan. You know, it's like, well, no, you know, Megan's busy. There's, you know, <laughs> there's a process yeah. here. Yeah. Um, you know, you kind of come through me first. So that that helped, I think, as well. Um, oh, yeah. To, yeah. Yeah. There's that, that kind of um, maybe mental, emotional component, knowing that, you know, there are people supporting me. I I am supporting them too. I'm not going to take on that one project that just wants, I don't know, like one sofa, that's not going to bring in the revenue to, to support us. That that time is then being taken away from other projects that are more in alignment. Mm-hmm. And that helps and makes sense. So I don't know if maybe that kind of help, helps to answer your question. <laughs> yeah, no, I think so. I think it's probably a comfort that you have a team behind you. And, you know, Start, um, not just to the yourself, but also to the client, you know? Yeah. 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 yeah it's somebody's putting it. it's somebody's out of office on, you know, when you go on, it's, a, it's, a, it's an out of office. <laughs> like, you know, I, I'm just putting out of office on. It's not just, you know, sorry, not going to answer, you know, right, it's, right. you know, okay. Yeah. Email. Hello at. Yes. For any urgent inquiries, you know, otherwise I'll get back to you. And that you know, has been yeah. huge <laughs> actually and I will say yeah. so so last year was kind of a fun and exciting and also kind of a crazy year but 
looking back, I was literally out of the country every other month. Some of it was for business and some of it was for, for fun. And, um, it was very nice to just say, you know, have my out of office, uh, contact this person for, you know, any emergencies or whatever it might be. And, and like I said earlier, it's like nothing ever stopped. Our projects kept moving forward. Um, and that's still the case this year. Mm. I, I, I was out for three weeks, a couple, couple last month, I think it was. And then I was in Costa Rica and it was just great to, to have that. Again, I'm, I'm still online, but it's nice to know that I could somewhat set some boundaries and I could still schedule emails to go out. But knowing that yeah. okay, my clients know that I'm out, but they also have this person ask questions too. Uh-huh. And then I'm there behind the scenes like, oh, yes, yeah. I can take this and this and this and this. <laughs> then I can text Megan, but at least it's not the client texting Megan, you know. Yes. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. It's been fun for yeah. sure. How did you determine your monthly budget for hiring a VA? You know what's funny about that? When I first started, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of a trial and error thing. Okay, let's take a look at, you know, what what we're doing here. So I think at first, this is, you know, um when Melissa and I first started working together. I think it was, what, did we start at 20 hours a month? Yeah, I think so. I, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to figure out, okay, how do I fill that time? Now I can fill that time easy. But, you know, I, I really had to take a look at, okay, what is my investment? What what am I bringing in revenue-wise on a, on a regular basis? And there are times, you know, as business owners that, you know, we'll have some highs and then and also some lulls and lows. So there were times where I've had to tell Melissa, like, hey, we're currently at 40 hours, but I think this month, you know, holidays in particular, um, you know, maybe we could bring it down to 30 or 20 or whatever it might be. Um, and, you know, I think for me, what I do is usually on Mondays, I'll take a look at uh, revenue, what's coming in, what's going out. But I've, I've created a, you know, a budget, my investment for, for each month. Uh, these are my overall expenses. And I've already accounted uh, Melissa and MCVA into that and know that that's part of my operating costs. Nice. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we start at 10 hours a month. That's our kind of minimum uh, support package. And, you know, anything really less than that. And it's, it's kind of, it just really moves the needle enough for you. You know, yeah. it, 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 you know, if you're serious about getting some help and moving forward, you know, 10 hours a month is, is a good start point. Um, and then from there, we go through the sort of, yeah, 50, 60 hours a month, depending on what, you know, support you need, what different areas, um, you know, and then what that, what that looks like. So, yeah. And, you yeah. know, it's flexible. We can, you know, we are, we're able to kind of upgrade and downgrade, you know, the summer has been a quieter time. I've had a few designers that, you know, let me know in kind of April, May, look, I'm traveling in July and, you know, the kids are off school and my son's going <laughs> to college and, you know, there's a lot going on. So, you know, where if they were on 20 hours, they're like, let's just downgrade to 10. For the you know for like June and July and we'll pick up again in August or whatever that looks like so yeah. you know there's yeah. some flexibility especially in this industry I appreciate it ebbs and flows so yeah <laughs> okay another question this is for Megan how do you design one when traveling that sounds nice <laughs> <laughs> so one of my big wins from last year um I I was in Thailand and my my client in San Diego was like so we're getting ready to close on this home we got four weeks and do you think that we could do this I'm like uh sure (laughs) I I did it and and I mean I just had to take a look at my resources I'm I'm from San Diego so I was able to call one of my designer girlfriends colleagues and contract her to uh, measure the space for me and from that point I just I was designing while I was in Thailand I, I did that whole space plan there was some furniture pieces and they had <laughs> they had a very very tight I will use the b word a very tight budget so um we we made that work and then with Melissa's help she's like okay I'll get the proposal together she got it all dialed in <laughs> I was I think I was still <laughs> <dialed in. laughs> like yeah <laughs> I I think that was the only project that I worked on while while I was away like actually designing but um the rest of the time it's usually like checking in on clients or having a presentation that's already been compiled um you know after I've seen the finishes and so forth uh usually I feel like everything has just aligned so well, you know, either projects are waiting for a permit or construction is happening. So it's just a matter of us following up or, you know, we're, we're getting ready to start construction. So we're having meetings to prepare for that. But last year, that was the only time that I was actually designing while I was out of the country. (laughs) 
<laughs> that was a lot of fun. I was like, okay, bring on the challenge. <laughs> and Melissa was a huge help in that. <laughs> what else do you got? Any other questions? Any more? Any more? I think we've answered everything. Unless anybody right. has something else. Okay, we've got another one. Melissa, it sounds like Megan is a great great at delegating. So how do you deal with designers who maybe aren't as organized? Excellent question. Good question. Good question. So yeah, you know, Megan is good. And it takes takes it takes time to get there, you know. So every design is different. You know, some may have a design software in place like design files or you know, I read others might have just a project management system in place they might not have a project management system in place you know we have those discovery calls to really kind of iron out you know where you're at I have some more sort of old school designers if you like you know self-confessed look I'm not techie I'm not going to start now <laughs> but, you know, I, I need some help um you know and they're just using google excel and that's how they send their invoices and you know so equally you know and they want to be on the phone every day like they have it so it is we adapt to your working style because everybody is different, you know, and it's not a one size fits all. Um, you know, we have delegation sort of guide and PDF and things. And, you know, we have as part of our onboarding. We, you know, we go through everything and what, what it is that we need to get set up and suggestions for getting things set up and okay, you don't have a project management system. Well, you know, equally, we don't want to overwhelm you with too much too soon because if you're completely yeah. new to the delegating game, you know, trying to, Fit, fit around plug in a square hole you know it, it's not gonna work so we have to kind of make sure you're comfortable everything's in your comfort zone um you know and and start small you know i would say like you know i think a lot of it can be overwhelming to look like you said megan you know you had that you had the cake and you had the crumb and it's like oh you know and it's like <laughs> where do i start you know you started with the bookkeeper you know and then it, the draft person and then the va and then the marketing and it you know, I think it's like really prioritizing what it is you want off your plate. Like, mm. what is that task? What is that? Is it marketing? Is it is it procurement? Is it um, you know, organizing your Google Drive folders? <laughs> Whatever yeah. that might yeah. be. Start there because then you know it, it it it's a good place to grow. You get comfortable. You get confident. You know, you build that rapport and that relationship with your VA um you know and that takes time you know that takes time to build and build that trust and then you know get to that point where you feel happy that okay yeah you know delegate more and more so yeah to add to that I'm wondering if you know a fun exercise would be to lay out all the the things that would help you to organize yourself a little bit better and then from there take a look at the things that would if you were to bring on a VA, what would help you to make more money? Is it is it relieving you of, I don't know, marketing tasks so that you could spend more time um, designing mm -hmm. or spend more time uh, prospecting or whatever it might be? Because um, that right there is, I mean, that's kind of the business side of the brain working. It's like, yeah. what could I pay to my VA so that I could spend more time in generating more revenue? Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Great answers. And I would add that it's, you know, there are softwares that can make things easier and there are even, you know, old fashioned versions of that, mm -hmm. that um, <laughs> you know, you can also implement. So if you're, if you're not afraid to learn new things, then, you know, you can, you can use the tools, you know, the right tool for the job mm -hmm. will help you along the line. And don't be afraid to make mistakes because how else are you going to learn and get better? Um, one, our, our coach actually said, you know, done is better than perfect. And <laughs> that's the post-it that yeah. has stuck with me, you know, it's not on my desk anymore because it's now just part of my process. Done is better than perfect. So you start somewhere and with that improvement in mind, like next time, now I'll do like slightly different and it'll be a little better and easier. And, mm -hmm. you know, if you just get started and also Melissa, don't you help? Um, I know you've helped us when we brought on a virtual assistant for the first time. We're like, um, <laughs> we need some help with getting the help too. So, <laughs> you know, she, she went in and created her own um, email you know, that connects to all of our emails so that she could have, you know, her own thing. And we didn't have to set that up because yeah. the idea yeah. of even 
Like, how do I even do that, right? How do I have the time to do that? Because now I'm overwhelmed. So that person can mm -hmm. be on that that role of setting that stuff up, whether it be mm -hmm. the software or the new email or the, you know, the Google yeah. board screen or whatever it is that's going to make mm -hmm. everything flow easier for you. You know, they can do that. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Good stuff, guys. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> this is very good. I think uh, I think there were some great questions asked. You certainly went through a ton of really helpful stuff. So I know that this is going to be a really popular one. Um, all right. So we have uh, we have thank yous coming through. You're welcome. Thanks, um, yeah. yeah. Thank you to everyone who who joined in and attended. Um, I will send this recording out very soon. So look for that in your email probably by, if not Friday, Monday for sure. Right on. Thank you. Right. Thank, you so Thank you. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, Heather. Um, Thanks, ladies. Yeah, it's been, been a nice uh, Wednesday lunchtime. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully everyone is inspired to go get some help. Okay. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.